Our scripture this morning is from the book of Joel, the prophet. And that is printed in your in an insert in your bulletin, or you may follow along in whatever Bible you choose. Joel chapter 2, verses 23 through 32. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for God has given the early rain for your vindication. God has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and even your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens and in the earth, at blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape as the Lord has said. And among the survivors, survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. Please pray with me. Adonai, we rejoice in your presence and in your provision. We celebrate your promises of plenty and years of want in years when loss outweighs gain. We celebrate that years of loss will pass and times of abundance and celebration will come. Help us to see and to know your face. Forgive us, God, when we forget your richness and your fullness. Forgive us when we don't notice the renewal of your great generosity. Help us to help one another to keep the faith we have in you, standing by us and giving us strength. In humility, help us to seek you out in prayer, knowing that in our honesty, we will find the truth in ourselves as well as in you. Show us mercy. Show us grace. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. As the book of Joel begins, just a chapter before our text, the people of God living in the land of promise were experiencing loss of every means of life to a plague of locusts or grasshoppers, leaf eaters, hoppers, I believe, just destroying everything around. They had nothing to feed themselves, nothing to feed their livestock, nothing but loss and sorrow were in their eyes. The food chain of the whole area was threatened. There would be famine, and they saw that. This crisis, like all crises, did not last forever, but in that moment, in that time, in the experience of that loss and the deaths that come out of that loss, because I'm sure people died in a place and time like that, it feels like forever before things begin to change. When we read about this, when we talk about times like that, we might have once thought, I have to imagine what that's like. Not all of us, but I have to imagine what that's like. But I think the pandemic was for us what the locust invasion was for the children of Zion. Several million globally have died and at least one million in this country have lost their lives due to this COVID virus. And just as they were not prepared for what came over the horizon, we were not prepared. 
We might have been better prepared, but we were not. We were left vulnerable, vulnerable globally and nationally before this pandemic. The people of Zion felt their losses, the losses of that plague of locusts, grasshoppers, deeply. And Joel does not say, you know what, you deserved it. He doesn't add to their burden. He doesn't see that they have done something to deserve this plague of grasshoppers. He doesn't link their losses to any kind of catastrophic sin, like sometimes we kind of hear the hint of that. He does, however, ask, or even you might say demand, in the voice of God, that they need to turn back to God that they need to talk to God in their situation, in their deep grief, turn to God, even beg God, plead with God for relief. He asked that they lament. An appropriate response to catastrophe, catastrophes like the locust, like the pandemic, any kind of loss, it's important to be able to express the deep hurt that is there. Personal communal, however that is. Take the time to share that pain, even if it's when you are alone with God. He doesn't call them to return or to turn to God because of some sin. He calls them to turn to God, to renew their faith, to take the time to know who it is that they need to talk to. The passage we read this morning is follows this time of loss, follows their time of lament. It's about God's response to their crisis. What happens after the devastation? What happens when things start to turn around? In Joel's place in time, their survival has come, whoever made it through, and it says the rains have started to fall again. He wants them to rejoice now, celebrating the return of all that God can give, even if it hasn't come back yet, yet, there are signs that it's returning. He wants them to rejoice now, celebrating in advance the return of all that God can give. And in this text, we hear that God expects through the, what Joel expects through the words of God, repayment for all the awful things that have happened. In the voice of God, it says, I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dwelt wondrous, wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other, and my people shall never again be put to shame. Even if Joel doesn't blame them, even if God doesn't blame them, there probably is a sense in which other people saw their losses as somehow they were to blame. We see that now sometimes too. But we also know that crises like this, losses like this, if we take a step back and take a longer view, Crises come in cycles. We can view the plague of locusts, especially in that time, as a part of the cycle of nature. Nature as created by God. As one author describes it, the manner in which a swarm of locusts entirely consumes all available plant life in their wake seems reminiscent of a massive forest fire in, in, ignited by a spark of lightning. Natural sciences tell us that those fires, while de deadly and devastating, have a purpose in the cycle of life. While the fires consume the territory, leaving immeasurable costs, they also renew the land in a manner not possible through any other means. The forest fire is a natural occurrence, and so is the swarm of locusts found in this text. Devastating and yet part of that cycle of life that we can't do a whole lot about and must experience. The locusts cleared the land and prepared it for a cleansing rain. That doesn't make the loss any less real and painful. 
and devastating. But they were not the end. When we remember the abundance that had been and will be again, the joy of rain, the joy of dreams and prophecy, the wonder of the Spirit of God, then we can lament and mourn and prepare for what happens next. New life, a fresh start perhaps. The pandemic of the last few years that continues to take lives even today was not what I would call a blessing, even disguise. <sighs> to say this carefully, yet in crisis and catastrophe, and because of crisis and catastrophe, we can learn. We don't wish it upon ourselves or anyone else, but we learned that we need one another. We need to be present with one another. We could connect in other ways, but they weren't exactly the same. They made us realize how important we were to one another. Many of us learned new things of editing, producing videos that we hadn't been forced to try before. Some of us learned how to interact through Zoom and other online meetings, even if we didn't want to. Even just learning to have a video phone call so that we could see our loved ones if we hadn't been able to see them in a long time. Many of you learned to seek out information wherever it was. You learned a little, little bit of research skills to figure out what our levels of, of disease, of, of illness were, and help us decide whether or not it was safe. We learned to connect with one another for those kinds of information so that we could prepare personally and preparing the building. We learned to remember the lessons of the past. Many began to read stories of the flu epidemic of 1918, seeing the similarities, um, realizing and hopefully learning from those past lessons, recognizing community responsibility, what was failed at then, what was failed at now, how they were similar and what we know about each other because of those things. Many of us recognize that people are, were just as stubborn then as they are now. And we, in this place, because of our love for each other, found ways of taking care of one another when things were the worst as well as when things began to improve. We masked when we need to. We were vaccinated as we understood what was necessary, not only for ourselves, which is important, but also for those among us who are most vulnerable. The pandemic had similarities to that locust invasion, threatening, painful, traumatic, death-dealing, and certainly a time of lament and loss. As the impacts of the pandemic are lasting, because people who lost their family members will never have them again, um, people who lost income may never have that same income again in that same way. And yet there are lessons and things to be gained from those lessons. We learned how many people can actually work from home instead of driving daily into offices, perhaps saving fuel for transportation, for heating and cooling, for maybe other things. We learned a lot about what it means to work and what the rewards of work can and should be. We learned in some cases how we can adapt our expectations of what we need and what we can sometimes do without. And we have learned that crises and catastrophes don't last forever. Even if it's not exactly over, it's better. We've learned that slowly things can improve over time, even if not as quickly as we might want. And so we can celebrate. Maybe not triumphantly dancing in the streets, but we can experience the real joy that can be uh, life renewed after loss. We can know that God can deliver us from difficulty, and we too are called to participate in helping one another get through those times. And we can celebrate the cycles of life, particularly in this time of year when as things go into um, a time of rest in this part of the globe, we can recognize that 
that time of rest prepares for next year's seasons of renewal, seasons of new growth, seasons of abundance and renewed hope. We can know that in faith, life comes anew again and again. To the glory of the Holy One, amen.